Hey guys, Bo HD here from How To and More, and today I've got a product that is unlike any other Android smartphone I've ever used, and that is the Moto X by Motorola and Google. It combines mediocre specs with some software tricks that makes this one of the fastest phones on the market, so without further ado, let's take a look at the hardware. Taking a look at the outside of the Moto X, you'll see it is a very good looking phone that has no logos on the front, which makes it look like a very premium device. The back has a Kevlar soft touch feel to it that is much better than the slimy plastic you'll find in other top of the line smartphones. And with its 4.7 inch display, it fits perfectly in my hands, and I feel like I can navigate the entire phone with one hand, so that is a huge plus. But if we take a closer look at what's on the outside of this device, we'll find your standard sleep on and off button along with the volume up and down controls on the right hand side, with nothing but the SIM card slot on the left hand side. On top is your 3.5mm headphone jack and noise cancelling microphone, with nothing but the micro USB charging cable down below. On the front of the Moto X is the 2.1 megapixel front facing camera and phone speaker, along with another microphone down at the bottom. Flipping this guy over, we'll find the 10.5 megapixel camera, the flash, the loudspeaker, and of course the indented Motorola logo that is actually very minimalistic and adds a strange but pleasant feel when holding the device. Now when you first power on the Moto X, the first thing you'll notice is the screen, and to be honest, when I heard this phone was only packing a 720p display, I was kinda disappointed, but when I actually got to see the phone in person, I couldn't even tell it had a subpar resolution. I mean, everything still looks crystal clear, and text and videos are nice and sharp, and I really don't think the average consumer could tell the difference between this screen and a 1080p screen unless you held them side by side. But the most interesting thing about this phone is how it performs, since it's marketed as a top-of-the-line smartphone despite its mediocre specs. Now the Moto X is rocking a dual-core 1.7GHz processor with 2GB of RAM, and while most new phones are using quad-core or even octa-core processors, the Moto X is the first phone to really prove that it doesn't need the latest specs to compete with the top-of-the-line devices. I mean, I've used devices like the HTC One and Galaxy S4, and while those phones are definitely fast phones, the Moto X is incredibly smooth and fluid when navigating and opening applications. This fluid experience really defines how important it is to find a balance between software and hardware, and I think Google and Motorola found that place with the Moto X. Now if we dive further into the phone and take a closer look at the camera app, you'll see Motorola did something weird as a sacrifice controllability for accessibility. Instead of tapping to focus, you tap to take a picture, while it automatically tries to assume what you're taking a picture of by focusing for you. I found this to be very annoying as you can't turn this tap to take a picture feature off, which resulted in a lot of extra unnecessary pictures as it would often not focus correctly. But overall the UI feels fluid as you swipe in from the left to access the settings and swipe to the right to get to your gallery. As for the photos themselves, they are not as sharp as I would have liked to see and the colors were a little bit muted. They definitely aren't terrible, but this 10 megapixel camera is definitely not the best on the market, so if you want a really nice camera on a phone, this might be a deal breaker for you. One other area that disappointed me was the battery life. While everyone has been saying that Motorola phones have a great battery life, I found that wasn't really the case with the Moto X. Yes, it should get you through an average day of heavy use with around 10% remaining, but I found that the standby time was terrible. For example, I would leave my phone on sleep overnight, and when I turn it back on in the morning, it would drop around 30% at times. I will note this is running Android 4.2.2 and is not running Android 4.3 like my Nexus 7, but my Nexus 7 will only drop a few percentage points in battery when I leave it on standby overnight, so I think it once it gets upgraded to Android 4.3, the battery life will definitely improve. Now this leads me to the features of the Moto X, which may also play a role in the low battery performance. The best feature I found with the Moto X is with its active notifications. Basically, if you get a text message or an email or really any notification, it will appear automatically as you take your phone out of your pocket or tap it when it's on a flat surface. This only works with AMOLED display since it can only power certain pixels that represent the time and notification, but overall I love this feature as I check the time a lot and it's nice not having to press the power button each time I do so. Another feature that is surprisingly useful was the always on Google Now support where basically you can say, okay Google Now, am I going to need an umbrella next week? And without having to touch your device, it'll tell you. No, rain is not expected this week in Portland. I can say this feature works really well, especially since it learns to recognize your voice, which is cool, but in a rather strange way. Now the last feature worth mentioning is the camera launching feature that basically lets you activate your camera app by turning your wrist. It works well and doesn't require too much wrist flicking, but it definitely is a unique way to activate the camera app. So to conclude my review of the Moto X phone, I can honestly say this is one of the best phones I've ever used, as I think Motorola and Google found a nice balance between hardware and software, which I think will really influence other phone manufacturers in the future, as they create a phone that also has a nice harmony between hardware and software. I will note that the price is expected to drop by about 100 bucks in the next couple of months, so if you can wait, you can definitely save a lot of money. You can also customize your Moto X by going to the Motorola website, where you can customize the back and button colors however you'd like, so if you're into having a customizable phone, you should definitely check that out. 
But with all these new features included with the Moto X, my question for you guys is, what do you like about the Moto X? Is it the customization I just mentioned, or maybe it's the active notifications? Let me know down below in a comment, and you could be featured in my next video. And if you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe either up above or down below so that you can stay up to date with all of my latest tech videos. But that will about do it for this video, guys. If you haven't taken a look at my first impressions and unboxing of the Moto X phone, you can do that right down below, along with checking out my review of the Samsung Galaxy S4 to see how it compares to the Moto X. But as always, guys, I'm BoHD from How To and More. Thanks for watching.